Welcome to WHX Insights. My name is Peter Birch. This episode is powered by WHX Tech in partnership with Ag for Healthcare. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Andram Ahmed, Chief Medical Officer and Global Director for Enterprise Imaging and Artificial Intelligence at Ag for Healthcare. Hello, Ahmed, how are you going? It is my pleasure to be with you today. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's great to have you here, and we're talking about artificial intelligence, much like many people are here at WHX Tech. Um, but uh, I think we're in the in the midst of it, in the thick of it right now. Sometimes we can almost forget some of where the origins came from in uh, in healthcare. And we were chatting a little bit before this discussion. And I'm fascinated to get your insights. So take me back uh, to to where this all kind of started. When we think about artificial intelligence in healthcare, particularly in the imaging space. Uh -oh. Oh, absolutely uh, amazing time here in the UAE, more specifically with what's happening with WHX Techs here. And what I heard this morning as well at the keynote in, in regards to bringing, you know, these innovative solutions to bring more prediction to healthcare. I want to take a step back because this year we're also celebrating 10 years of our collaboration with uh, Dubai Health. So Aqua Healthcare and Dubai Health have been partners in, in the journey on innovation with artificial intelligence. And not many are aware, uh, and probably today, because there's so much conversation about, is artificial intelligence real? Is it, is it gonna work? We started this journey in 2015, if you believe, when no one was even talking about AI. And here we were with, uh, with uh, some of the, the decision makers in government of Dubai, discussing ideas, what, type of innovation can we bring into automating some of the medical imaging workflows? And that was driven by a, a couple of challenges that uh, the government of Dubai had identified in terms of the number of exams, imaging exams that were being done and how triage was becoming difficult because of lack of resources and, 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 and some capacity. So that's when we sat down together in 2015 and we conceptualized an AI a use case for automation of chest X-ray screening. And it's, it's interesting because when uh, it took, we signed a memorandum of understanding, it was announced at Arab Health in uh, 2016. And then uh, we worked on that project together with the team here at Dubai Health, uh, with some of their physicians and radiologists, and we developed a prototype of an automated imaging, ba imaging based detection algorithm to pick up normals and abnormals within, you know, abnormalities within the chest x-ray. Uh, as far as I know, this was the first evidence-based publication that came out of this region between uh, two, uh, you know, uh, corporations like industry and, and the, the government. And it was also published at the European Respiratory Society uh, and presented over there as well. So that's how the world came to know that, hey, you know what? Government of Dubai had envisioned this together with an industry partner, and they have even published a result uh, for this. And that triggered a lot of conversation here in the region that, oh, you know what? AI can be real. It is not just based on you know scientific or theoretical uh, papers or publications. It is something that two organizations, they came together and they have tested it and validated. And there were a lot of takeaways and lessons learned as well as part of that exercise. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because we need, on one hand in healthcare, all of that evidence and research to demonstrate efficacy and whatnot. But, you know, you can't be what you can't see at the same time. So we ought to have those examples to then build on, I guess, brings us to, to where we are today. And everyone's excited about the potential and the, um, you know, where things are going. But, you know, if I was to look at what's happening today, particularly in the imaging space and artificial intelligence, you know, how real is it in the in the practical um, realities of healthcare? You you bring forward a very important point because that journey that we took, when we were the first ones who started developing this, there were not many developers or AI developers around at that time between 2015 and 2017 or 2018. Today, as it stands there are more than 1,000 FDA-cleared AI algorithms in medical imaging. Out of those more than 1,000, 80% are in radiology, a few others in cardiology, and then a couple of others in other specialties. The question and the challenge then is, and that's what most of these organizations are faced with, hospitals, healthcare systems, where do we begin with? And one 
thing that I really like about our initial collaboration that started in you know, 10 years ago with the government of Dubai was, it wasn't about what feature or functionality we are developing. It was more about what problem are we going to solve, number one. Number two, what feature functionality are we going to develop with AI that will help us solve those problems, number two. And number three, what outcomes are we going to improve? So these three questions were the fundamental and core principles that drove our collaboration. And also learning on, on the way, because there was no not much of technology available uh, 10 years ago when you were developing these algorithms. It's different today where it stands. But what we learned as a result of this exercise is that it is not about feature functionality, as I said. It is about what problems do you want to solve and what outcomes do you want to improve. And we defined certain KPIs. that this is These are the key performance indicators that we want to improve. Operational, clinical uh, workflow, uh, you know, outcomes improvement, early detection, and all those. So that's how it kind of came about. And that's something that I see today is missing because Technology, AI, or all these deep learning algorithms cannot reside in their own silos. And that's where the enterprise level integration of these algorithms into day-to-day -day routine clinical workflow is needed in medical imaging. Mm. That's interesting, isn't it? Because it's it can be very tempting if you were um, any stakeholder in healthcare, be it uh, you know running a health system or even a developer of solutions, to think, well, how can we inject artificial intelligence into this thing? Because it seems to be the thing to do. Whereas, you know, you take the right approach, which is what problems are we trying to solve and how do we measure success? So I think that's that's going to be really important. You touched on um, something I was thinking that you know I, I think about where a lot of these. Um, opportunities fall down is in that implementation side. The vision is there and the idea of like, this is what we're going to do, but then you go to put it in place and then, um, you know, the reality of healthcare sets in. So you bring up this point, uh, elaborate a little bit more, you know, that the that difference between just doing these point to point solutions versus that into our enterprise wide approach. What's really important is setting the expectations, realistic expectations, because what we have seen in the initial years of implementing AI is the user adoption becomes a challenge after you have deployed a solution. Yeah, uh, a particular organization may have decided that they want to choose a particular solution because of X, Y, Z reasons. Hype of AI, uh, someone did a better marketing pitch or story <laughs> around promoting yeah. their solution. And the hospital decides, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go with this. The first challenge we saw in the earlier years were that integrating AI into routine clinical workflows became an afterthought. So that's where when hospitals started implementing AI, they said, well, it is a black box that sits somewhere in our server room and it's not integrated into our workflow. So radiologists, diagnostic imaging experts were having challenges because AI was generating all the results and it wasn't integrated. And this is exactly what we did 10 years ago here in Dubai. The, the output, what do we do with the outputs of the data that is being generated by mm. AI. So workflow integration is key to ensure ease of adoption. But that's only one part. Because as I said, if the, the intended use is not well understood, then the users will start facing challenges with AI because they will say, oh, you know what, I, I, I don't think the results are uh, correct. The, 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 I don't accept the AI results. What do you do? Some of them will, st some of them actually stop, stopped using AI. They say, you know what? I don't like it. I don't want to use it. So that's where you know training and education of users. So it is, it is consider this as a program where you need proper governance, and that's where I keep talking about an enterprise strategy, because if you think about traditional medical imaging solutions, which started with uh, siloed PACS systems, cardiology PACS, radiology PACS. Mm. Think about AI as well on those lines because you have so many different AI solutions. You cannot, ha you cannot have hodgepodge of multiple solutions sitting in a server room presenting results and, and nothing is happening, right? So that's where you need an enterprise strategy where AI results need to be seamlessly integrated into your enterprise imaging workflow in medical imaging in an ecosystem of a common platform. And I think that is where we have learned the initial challenges that we had in the beginning, user adoption challenges, uh, lack of proper understanding of the intended use of the application as well, because regu regulatory approval is one thing, whereas expecting the AI to do something different. So that's where a lot of 
education is also required that the solution that you are using has one intended use do not expect the solution to deliver you on more than what it is expected mm. to do and that's that's the key yes i feel like too that um, how important that element of you know clinician engagement and sometimes patient engagement too depending on the solution because you know um, if you've implemented a half-baked solution and the clinician's first experience with it as well, this doesn't solve my issues, as you were alluding to, it can be very difficult to then rebuild that trust and engagement once a solution is um, more evolved. And at the pace of evolution these days, you know, that, that that's a reality. So really important point. And I guess the uh, another, you know, um, almost just a, a, a ticket to play or a, a minimum requirement these days is security and privacy, given the the um, sensitivity of healthcare information. A lot of the points that you just mentioned also tie into that as well. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so there is there are three aspects when you implement AI. What you need to to, to keep in consideration. Uh, number one, as I mentioned, we discussed about the workflow integration. The, the second important aspect of this is post go live. You cannot leave the users solely dependent upon you know their own perception of how yeah. AI is performing. There need to be there needs to be quality assurance programs in regards to AI performance, AI drift, because anything may change in the hospital setup. Right? They might add new medical imaging modalities. They may have new users who are not trained on the system. AI, the versioning as well, right? AI may have a new version that may not be either underperforming or overperforming. So it's important. The second important aspect is the quality assurance aspect. And the third aspect of this is there will be new algorithms more frequently now as compared to what we have seen in the last few years. So the, the thing is sustainability, right? How do you want to sustain this innovation in the long term? Because what you have deployed today may not be the same as in the next six months or in the in the next year. So the organizations need to be also future ready with the investments that they're making with AI solutions today. And that can only happen if you have a good enterprise imaging system that has APIs and the hooks into integrating in a cyber secure environment. You'd be surprised if I tell you that there have been in the last few years solution providers who have been using open source OS platforms and that posed certain risks and certain customers, government institutes as well, where cybersecurity and, and cyber uh, security assessment is a key requirement. So before we as uh, an enterprise imaging solution provider onboard any AI solution, we go through their you know penetration testing and all those different requirements related to cybersecurity. And it's it's rel it's important that healthcare organizations also understand that if a freebie solution is being delivered to them for a trial and evaluation, they need to be careful to, to ensure before they integrate it or, or onboard it into their environment, it meets some of those requirements related to how the data is being handled, what operating systems are they using, are they using end of life systems or are they using solutions that are you know validated. So this is this is something that is I think really important and I think it needs to be highlighted even more further. Well, that reflects the reality of, of healthcare today, doesn't it? As more and more clinicians become uh, technically affluent, but also more and more solutions can be adopted from the bottom up, so to speak. Uh, I think a lot of CIOs and CTOs will, will see more and more of these um, uh, solutions pop up. So I guess to have that, that enterprise wide and controlled systematic approach makes a lot of sense to me. So I guess lastly, um, Anjum, thinking about all of that, you know, where we've gone from and where we are today, what happens next? Where are you picturing the ball going in terms of uh, the potentials and in artificial intelligence and in imaging um, in healthcare specifically? They say 60 to 70 percent of a patient's diagnostic intelligence and data resides in medical imaging. About this, a picture is worth a thousand words. And I say a medical image is worth millions of pixels of intelligence. And that intelligence is now ready to be utilized and, and, and bring some predictive value with, with, with this. So the way I see this is there will be more integration of non-imaging data and medical imaging data because now we are talking about genomics. We are talking about pathology as well. So more image biomarkers. So that means that when 
a radiologist or diagnostic imaging expert will have a look at these images, they'll be looking at patient as a whole. So that doesn't mean that if, if an X-ray procedure or a chest CT scan or, or a mammogram is done, that they're looking at this in isolation. They will have automated access to relevant data related to that particular image or condition. Today, this is the missing link. Mm. When a radiologist today looks at an image, if uh, a suspicious nodule in a chest CT, they have to think logically about several things. Right? You know, what is the pro criteria for follow-up and all that without any linkages from electronic health records or any other information that resides. And, and with the emergence of, you know, you may have heard about agentic AI and AI agents. So the ability to extract this information intelligently and present this to the diagnostician, not only from a radiology reading perspective, but also, you know, physicians, they do a lot of MDTs, multidisciplinary tumor board meetings, to present those in a holistic way for a patient, kind of creating a real digital twin, virtual digital twin of this particular patient and be able to associate this patient to a particular profile of, you know, sample uh, precision health where it comes. So I think that's where in the next couple of years we will see this shift uh, of marriage of medical imaging and non-imaging clinical data and bringing automation, uh, more and more automation and predict prediction yeah. uh, to these use cases. And I think that's, that's important too because, you know, nowhere in that answer is, you know, let's replace the clinicians with the robots because that will be much better. It, it's instead, uh, let's enable those, um, uh, those that are diagnosing the clinicians to have better tools to be more informed, which then open up the potential to focus more on things like prevention, as you say. Uh, and I would like to say this, this is not about artificial intelligence anymore. It is about augmented intelligence. The way I'd like to define augmented intelligence is, is the intersection of machine learning and advanced applications where clinical knowledge and medical data converge on an intelligent platform. And I think this platformization that is going to happen in the future, very soon, is the integration and marriage of this intelligent data. Yeah. Dr. Ahmed, I could keep chatting with you, but we're going to have to I leave know. it there. I, I really appreciate you making the time. Thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you. And thank you for joining me for an episode of WHX Insights. This episode was powered by WHX Tech in partnership with Ag for Healthcare. Make sure you're subscribed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube so you can catch all the other episodes. My name's Peter Birch. I'll see you next time.